What's going on guys? In this video I'm going to be talking about catalytic converters, what exactly they are, what they do for your vehicle. I'm also going to talk a little bit about what test pipes are as well as high flow cats. So just as a quick overview of the exhaust system, starting from the exhaust tips, we have, of course, our mufflers. These are used to help reduce the noise in the exhaust to appropriate levels. We have the exhaust resonators, which function similar to the mufflers. They help kind of take out some of the high notes and other unwanted tones in the exhaust. We then have our catalytic converters, which sit just before the exhaust manifold, which is used to collect all of the gases from the different cylinders and pass it through your catalytic converters. So a catalytic converter is slightly different from the other exhaust elements on the car in that it is filled with a catalytic mesh, which allows some of the different parts of the exhaust gas to be sort of filtered out or cleaned up to prevent any dangerous and toxic gases from being released from the car while it is operating. The catalytic mesh is typically made out of platinum nowadays. There are, of course, other types of catalytic materials out there, but catalytic converters nowadays are mostly made of platinum. Catalytic converters are also equipped with one or two places to be able to mount oxygen sensors to be able to measure the state of the exhaust gas to ensure that the catalyst is working. When catalytic converters first came around in the mid-1970s, they originally only filtered out carbon monoxide as well as unburned hydrocarbons in the air by oxidizing them to form water and CO2. But with the introduction of three-way catalysts in the early 1980s, we were able to filter out certain nitrogen oxides which cause smog as well as acid rain, namely nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide, which in the end end up simply becoming nitrogen gas which is naturally present in the air. And along with the water and the carbon dioxide, these three byproducts of the catalytic conversion process are much less harmful to the environment than the original pollutants that we get out of an internal combustion engine when burning fossil fuels. Unfortunately, we do not have a way currently to be able to filter out the CO2 because it is a much more difficult process to be able to get this to be converted into something less harmful, but CO2 is still much less harmful to the environment than our other pollutants. So now we'll get into some of the more technical details about catalytic converters. Here we are looking at a three-way catalytic converter, which is typically made of two phases. We have a reduction phase as well as an oxidation phase. In the reduction phase, it is made out of a platinum rhodium material. We have this mesh here that you see inside the catalytic converter made out of this material, and it is responsible for reducing some of the nitrogen oxides that are inside the exhaust gases. Originally, when the internal combustion engine burns the fuels, we'll have unburnt oxygen here, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. We will have our nitrogen oxides, including NO and NO2. We will have our unburned fuel in the form of hydrocarbons, and we will have water. As it passes through the platinum rhodium material, the mesh has a lot of surface area which allows certain nitrogen oxides to be able to combine with the catalyst surface. What happens is the nitrogen wants to combine with the platinum rhodium on the surface and this separates the nitrogen molecules from the oxygen and allows it to be recombined as simply nitrogen gas and oxygen gas. In the case of nitrogen or nitric oxide, we usually have two molecules, 2NO, and this gets converted into one molecule of nitrogen and one molecule of oxygen. With uh, nitrogen dioxide, we will have two molecules again. This will end up combining into one nitrogen molecule and two oxygen molecules. The great thing about catalysts is, if any of you have taken basic chemistry, the catalytist material doesn't actually get used up in this process. It's simply used as a step in the reaction. So in this case, with the reduction phase, we just have those nitrogen atoms being broken from the weak bonds inside the nitrogen oxide, combining with the surface, and then they want to recombine with other nitrogen molecules because they form a stronger bond that way. All right, now at this point, we have eliminated our nitrogen oxides. We have gained some nitrogen gas molecules as well as some additional oxygen molecules. Earlier, I had mentioned that catalytic converters typically have oxygen sensors in them. You will typically have one either on the exhaust manifold or on this side of the catalytic converter. And in the case of the catalytic converter for my 370Z, we also have an oxygen sensor that's put in the middle of it between the reduction and oxidation phases. 
This is to be able to measure the amount of oxygen that's actually inside of the exhaust gas. In theory, if the reduction phase is working correctly, we should see some additional oxygen levels inside of this gas to ensure that our catalytic converter is working properly. Now, at this point, we still have some of that carbon monoxide as well as some of that unburned fuel in the form of those hydrocarbons. With the oxidation phase, we are now using a platinum palladium type material, PTPA, and what this phase is going to do is going to combine some of that unburned fuel and that carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide and water. So the material here in the oxidation phase wants to combine with carbon and oxygen. So in the case of carbon monoxide, we will end up having two CO molecules and we will have one single oxygen molecule. When these combine with the surface, the oxygen molecule wants to end up splitting up and combining with the carbon monoxide material. And this ends up producing two molecules of carbon dioxide. And in the case of our hydrocarbons, the hydrocarbons during this phase will want to combine with oxygen molecules and here we will get water and carbon dioxide. So that now at the end of these two phases, we have reduced our exhaust gases to less harmful material, namely water, oxygen, nitrogen, and less harmful carbon dioxide. Unfortunately, catalytic converters are not 100% efficient. You will still have trace amounts of carbon monoxide, hydrocarbons, and uncombined nitrogen oxides still in your exhaust gas. But there are a lot of design considerations that go into catalytic converters to try and maximize this efficiency. For instance, how tight do you want your mesh to be? How thick do you want each of these sections to be while not reducing the efficiency of the engine? Catalytic converters are also more efficient when they're at temperature because the increased temperature allows the acceleration of these reactions to occur. That's why most times you will see the catalytic converters mounted closer to the exhaust manifold rather than far away from it. That's why they are one of the first elements inside the exhaust chain. Now, in the car community, people will often try to modify the catalytic converters or eliminate them completely to be able to improve the exhaust flow through their exhaust as well as maybe change up the sound a little bit. One of the things that you can do for this is you can use high flow catalytic converters to try and stay within legal limits imposed by the state and by federal law, but while also improving the flow of exhaust gas through the car. What it does with a high flow cat is it mainly just adjusts the amount of mesh that is used inside of the catalyst. You'll have much larger sections for the exhaust gas to be able to flow through. This improves the efficiency of the exhaust flow through the engine or through the exhaust, but it also reduces the efficiency of the catalyst because there's not as much surface area for those molecules to be able to recombine. The other option, which some people will choose because it's a lot cheaper since platinum catalyst material is really expensive, is people will try and just delete the catalytic converters completely. Um, there's two ways people will do this. Either they'll take their stock catalytic converters and they'll punch holes through them or try and take out all of the catalytic material completely to be able to open up that exhaust flow a little bit better. Or some people will just go and buy what are called test pipes. Test pipes are a piece of piping that replaces your catalytic converter with a completely open path for the exhaust to be able to flow through. They will often try and implement things like uh, bungs here to be able to attach your O2 sensor to, to try and trick the computer into thinking that the uh, exhaust, uh, the catalytic converter is working correctly. But in my experience, this hardly ever works. When you modify your catalytic converter in this way, you are prone to seeing some engine codes because the computer is gonna realize that your catalyst is not working correctly. There are a couple of ways to get around this, of course. You can get the car tuned to where the check engine light will go off, and sometimes people will do that to try and trick their uh, inspection crews to be able to pass them during inspection. But speaking of inspections and exhaust laws, let's go ahead and get into the legal information surrounding catalytic converters. Are you required to have one installed on your car? So are you actually required by law to have catalytic converters installed on your car? Federal law actually states no matter what state you're in, you are required to have catalytic converters on your vehicle. You're not allowed to tamper with them. You're not allowed to install a bypass to get around them. A lot of people think that it's actually a state level issue because certain states don't do emission testing, so they don't enforce this. But actually federal law states that you must have catalytic converters installed on your vehicle. The real question is which states actually do emission testing. 
I am going to go ahead and leave a link in the description below that details what the state requirements are for emission testing if you're required to get one during inspection or during registration and that'll give you an idea of what the requirements are in your state. However, do understand that federal law does still require you to have catalytic converters on your car. They just do not have a way to enforce this yet. Keep that in mind if you decide to go with test pipes or somehow modify the catalytic converters that are already installed on your vehicle. And that is it for this video, guys. If you found it informative, give it the thumbs up. If I explained something wrong, just throw me down in the comments below. Subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And you can also follow my build on the 370Z. And I will see y'all in the next video. Later.